Hey folks, welcome back. Why don't we just start with a situation today? Let's say that you are the data scientist for a pet food company and your boss comes up to you and says, hey, this AI thing seems really important and we need to get on top of it. I want you to build a chat bot that's gonna talk to our customers to help them figure out which pet food they wanna buy. So you say, okay, sounds pretty fun and you get to work. And for the first part of the project, it seems really cool. Whereas you're used to solving problems with math and statistics, this feels way more like creative writing. You're just tweaking the prompts here and there, you're changing the temperature, it feels kind of like magic, and you're seeing what the chatbot can and can't do. And eventually you reach a state where it feels good enough, there's things it does really well, there's other things that you kind of know are known issues it's not doing too well. But when I've been at this stage in these LLM type projects, this question comes to mind where it's like, how do I know if this is actually doing a good job? How do I take this qualitative feel of what it can and can't do and translate that into some kind of quantitative measurements of how good is it doing and where are the areas for improvement? Now, if this were more of a traditional machine learning problem like a classification or a regression problem, we wouldn't even really have this conversation because there's known metrics and measures we can use in those problems. For classification, we can just use precision or recall or accuracy. For regression, we can use mean squared error, for example. But in these more qualitative new LLM chatbot applications, how do we take question and answer pairs or even full conversations with the user and know if that is in some sense good or not good or somewhere in between? Well, you know what? Let's start at our most simple and work our way from there. At the most simple, you can fall back on the way we test normal software products using something called unit tests, which are just these small logical true or false tests that check whether some condition in the code is met. And we can do the exact same thing with our LLM question and answer pairs. So for example, if the user asks a question like, can you give me the name of the lowest priced dog food? We better respond with the lowest priced dog food. That should actually be in the response. And that could be one of our unit tests. We can have that simulated question and then we can see if the answer coming back from the chatbot actually contains the lowest priced dog food or not. And that'll be a true or false. Now, this whole family of very easy to check unit tests can encompass many different types of checks. For example, that was one. Another one is the number of words in the response. This is something I use really often. Usually we don't want these chatbots to be overly wordy. We want to get the message across in a short amount of text. So we can enforce that the response must be under 50 words, for example, especially if that was an instruction in the prompt, we definitely wanna check for that. Other things we can check at this level are things like regular expressions. If you're expecting a percentage in the response, make sure there's some kind of numerical percentage in the response. We can also check for the existence of certain words or phrases, like in that first example where we were checking for the existence of the phrase containing the lowest price dog food from our inventory. Now this is a really good start, but what it's missing is more of a qualitative check on the quality of the responses. Now, to get a sense of that, let's use that same exact question. Let's say the customer asks, what's the lowest price dog food? And your chatbot responds with, it is true bark dog food. Now, this isn't wrong, and it's going to pass all of the tests from the previous set that we talked about, but there's something very unconversational and unfriendly kind of cold about this response. Now, your previous set of tests is not gonna pick up on this because all the objective measures we're checking word count, the existence of phrases is probably going to be true here, but there's still something missing. We're missing the quality and friendliness and just the overall vibe, I guess, is the best way to put it, of the response. And that's where we're still gonna stay in the realm of unit tests, which are just checking some kind of measure of goodness of a question answer pair. But we want a more powerful tool to assess the quality of this response. And that is where, and this is gonna sound counterintuitive, that is where we usually use another LLM called the Judge LLM in order to check if the response from this chatbot, this first LLM we built, is good in some way. For example, a unit test like that would look like, here's the question that we're gonna ask our chatbot, here's the answer that comes out of the chatbot, and the Judge LLM is gonna have a true-false criteria that says, if this answer is friendly in tone, please give a true, otherwise give a false. Now this is still a unit test as we talked about, it's just operating at the level of the question and answer pair. But it's not geared towards some kind of easily measurable quantity like word count, but rather towards the general vibe and the tone of the response. Now here's where we address the elephant in the room. If we're using a judge LLM to assess the quality of our initial LLM, 
How do we judge the judge? How do we know whether the judge LLM is doing a good job? And that is exactly the right question to ask. If we didn't ask that question, we're doing something wrong. And you know what? We have a couple of options here and they're not mutually exclusive. The first one is probably the easiest one, um, especially if you're on resource constraints. And that is to just keep the questions we're asking to this judge LLM pretty straightforward and pretty simple. So there's just less room for error and false positives and false negatives in the first place. The second one, this is more involved, but more correct in my experience, is that we are going to need to calibrate this judge LLM against responses from actual human beings to know if the judge is doing a good job. And here's kind of what that looks like. So let's take that same question, which is basically tell me true or false, is this answer friendly in tone or not? We're gonna have something like, let's say a hundred humans give a true or false of their own answer to that question. If they think that response is friendly, they'll give a true, otherwise they give a false. Now we're going to calibrate our judge LLM using those hundred called gold labels or ground truth labels. These are the absolute baseline for correctness. And we're gonna tweak our judge LLM prompt until it's giving as close as possible agreement to those human beings. And let's say our threshold for good enough agreement is 80%, whether that's on metrics like precision or Cohen's Kappa. If we reach 80% agreement with those 100 or so gold labels, we're saying this judge is calibrated well enough. And from there on, we're good to just use the judge. We no longer need to fall back on the more time consuming and expensive human beings. We can just use this much faster and cheaper judge LLM, which has been calibrated to what humans would say to a good enough level to use for this application. So that's one way to get around this whole who's judging the judge problem. And so far we've done a lot of good work. So we've talked about easy to measure unit tests, like just stuff like word count. We've talked about more qualitative unit tests where we're using a judge LLM calibrated to humans to judge our chatbot. But what is all of this still missing? We're still working at the level here of question and answer pairs. Given this question, tell me something about the quality of this response. We are missing the quality of the overall conversation. We can easily get into a case where each question and answer is fine in some sense, but if we zoom out and take a look at the entire conversation, it's not really flowing very well. It's not really going very well from the first question to the next question to the next question. There's something just off about it. And so the last tier of evaluation of these chatbot and these LLMs that we're gonna talk about is the overall conversational quality. Now I'll say up front, this is the hardest thing to get correct, even if you're just using human beings for this task, because it is so subjective. I could look at a back and forth conversation, you could look at the same back and forth conversation, and based on just who we are as two separate human beings, we could have very different answers on if this conversation is good or not. So I'll say up front, this is the hardest of the evaluation criteria we've talked about, but it's also the most important because it's gonna get at globally, are we doing a good job? Whereas the previous ones we talked about are more locally, are we doing a good job? So how might we go about this? So one way that folks go about this is, and this is especially true before you release your chatbot to real customers, where you don't exactly know the types of personas that are gonna use this chatbot, is to fabricate or simulate different personas that you expect in the real world. For example, you might have one persona for a cat owner who is trying to get the lowest price cat food. Another could be a dog owner who is trying to get the highest quality dog food for their pet. Yet another one could be a non-pet owner who's just trying to get a sense of how much does pet food cost me over the course of a year. So you have all these different personas and to capture and simulate these personas, you use, yes, you guessed it, another LLM. So there's gonna be a lot of LLMs we're about to talk about, so it's good to keep them separate in our brain. So there's this first LLM who's going to adopt the persona of one of these simulated personas we just talked about. And that can come in the form of the prompt of, pretend you are a cat owner who is obsessed with finding the lowest quality cat food, or pretend you're a non-pet owner who is trying to understand the cost of pet food. So you have this first LLM who is simulating the user. Now the next LLM is the one we've been talking about and the one we actually care about assessing, who is going to be the chatbot itself. And the third LLM is going to be a judge LLM, just like we had before, but now this judge LLM has an even more difficult task, which is to assess the quality of this whole back and forth conversation with the first user simulated LLM and the second our own chatbot LLM, which is going to be having that conversation with the user simulated LLM. So at this point, we kind of just let them go at it for let's say a fixed number of turns. We say, hey user, go ahead and initiate with your question. Hey, the chatbot we're building, go ahead and give your response. And we just have these bots talking back and forth until let's say we have 10 turns back and forth each. And that gives us an entire conversation. 
We take this entire conversation and we feed that into our judge LLM, which is gonna give us some kind of numerical score between one and five, one being this is a very low quality conversation and that persona that users needs are not met. Five being this is a great, perfect conversation that users needs are perfectly met by this conversation. And how do we calibrate that one to five scale? Using the same exact technique we just talked about prior, which was using real human beings. So we get a small number, let's say three to five human beings who are going to judge each conversation and rate it on a scale of one to five. We ideally want more than one human for each of these conversations, because like we said, you and I can be given the same conversation and give very different scores. So we want some diversity to see what the upper, lower, and average score might be. So we get all those gold labels from real human beings on these fabricated conversations, and we go ahead and use those to calibrate our new judge LLM so that it's giving as close responses as those humans would have given. So ideally, at the end of the day, we have a judge LLM who is giving as close as possible responses to what humans would have said for these back and forth conversations. So this is all feeling very AI to me, and it probably is to you as well. But given the tools we have at our disposal, this is usually a pattern people will go with. You have a simulated user, you have your chatbot, you have a LLM judge who is calibrating to what humans would have said. So that going forward, you can use this LLM judge to give pretty good one to five grade scores or one to 10, whatever scale you wanna use here for how good is this conversation. And then you know your chatbot is ready to release to real human beings, to real customers on your website if you are getting good enough scores between one and five from this judge LLM. And now once you release your chatbot to real users, you can actually drop that first simulated user LLM because now you have real human beings. And that's even better and more accurate who are actually using your chatbot. So you have actual conversations from your website. And now you can use these actual back and forths between human beings and your chatbot. And you can feed those into the judge LLM to see how you're actually doing. So hopefully this gave you kind of a survey of different ways people evaluate chatbots because the first time I started working on these projects, it seemed really hard. It's a really fun thing to work on as a data scientist because you get to access these parts of your brain that you don't typically get to access. But at the same time, evaluation is really, really, really even more so important here than those traditional ML applications where we know better how to do evaluation. Because these chatbots, at the end of the day, folks, they can say anything to users. And so therefore they may have the highest reward but also carry the highest risk. And so evaluating them well and making sure that they're baseline doing a good job and putting some numbers, having a quantitative aspect to that is super, super important. So hopefully this gave you a good survey and places you can go from the easiest, those very basic unit tests, to the hardest, these more conversation level evaluation criteria, things you can do to evaluate your chatbot. So thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Any comments are welcome in the section below and I'll see all you wonderful, wonderful people next time.